Hello viewers, I greet all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, my name is Sodongo Shadra, one of the pastors at Set Free Life Church. Today we welcome you to our online service. And don't miss, please invite your friend, tell your friend, tell your, your neighbors around you that we are going to praise, worship, and listen to the word of God. Uh, and today I believe that you're going to be blessed. Please uh, subscribe on our YouTube at Set Free Life Church and also follow us on Facebook at Set Free Life Church. We love you all. I'm going to give a word of prayer and then I will invite straight away the praise and worship team that are going to take us through the radical praise and worship. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for today. We thank you for everything that you have done. And I believe that you are doing us well and doing somebody well out there. Lord, as we praise you, as we worship, as we, as we listen to the word, Lord, I believe that you bless us. Bless our lives, O King of glory. And feed us in your word. We give you praise. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray and believe. Amen. Don't let your friend miss. Please call them around. And let's watch. Let's follow us together. Let's praise and worship the Lord. Choir, you're welcome. the Lord Church. We are happy to worship and praise with you today. And we want to say that you are loved, you are blessed to have a Jehovah who is doing greater things in your life. Amen. 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 And as you are going to praise and worship, may you please join with us. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You can clap up your hands. You can lift them up as we give the God the glory this morning. And who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. One time, who has the final say? Oh, the 
That is why, your Father, we worship you. That is why, your Lord, we worship you. Yes, Lord, thank you. We give you glory, God. We bless your name, Lord. Somebody can worship. Somebody can worship if you don't mind. Because we love you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. Never be compared to anything. Yes, Lord, we worship you. You were great, you were mighty, God. Yes, Lord, we worship you, oh Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 
Cause you are the way maker Way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, my God that is who you are One more time, way maker Way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Bless you, Lord. You can speak to God if you don't mind. Father, we bless you, name of God. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You're the way maker, you're the miracle worker, you're the promise keeper, oh God. Father, we thankful, oh God, for whatever you've done, oh God. And what you're yet to do, we lift up our voices and our hearts, oh God. To adore you. Because there's no one like you. Whatever you do, nobody can do. You're the way maker. When our backs were against the walls, oh God, you made a way. That is why we trust you. We trust you, Lord. With everything of ours, oh God. Somebody can speak to God. You can just say this words of thanksgiving to him. Lord, we worship you. We thank you, my God. Even these times, oh God, of tragedy, where the world is at stake, oh God, you've made a way, you've provided, oh God. You've sustained us, oh God. And oh Father, if we don't say thank you, then we are liars, oh God, we are cheaters. For you've made us survive, oh God, for all us nayas, oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. Katundo wa manyi mutukuvu wa mazima labe chitiwa kuntebe ye Katundo wa manyi mutukuvu wa mazima labe chitiwa Katondo wa manye Katondo wa manye Mutukuvu Wa mazima Lale chitiwa Kutebe Katondo wa manye Katondo wa manye Mutukuvu
Yeah, praise the Lord. It's your friend and pastor, Samson Benon Kawoko. I want to bring greetings from our family and the family of Set Free. It's always a joy to speak to you, and I believe God has been so good to you. That's the reason you're listening to me tonight. It's my prayer you will be blessed, you will be encouraged, and your life will never be the same again. Before we proceed, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. Your word does wonders. Your word does miracles. Your word heals. Your word restores. Your word empowers. And here we are gathered again to hear from you. It's my prayer that as I speak, the words that will come out of me shall be nothing but your word. Nothing but your rema, your revelation, your encouragement. It's my prayer that whoever listens to me tonight shall never be the same again. Jesus my name we do pray. Amen. Yeah, it's a joy to speak to you one more time. It's my prayer you get blessed as we proceed. We've been looking at the book of Hebrews and there are so many profound lessons. And tonight I am excited about what I'm about to share. I'm going to share from the book of Hebrews chapter 5 just a couple of verses and you will be restored and encouraged. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 verses 8 and 9 it says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the thing which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Though he were a son, praise the Lord. That is a very powerful statement. These are very short verses, but very powerful. And they are talking about none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son. The Bible is telling us clearly that though he was a son, though Jesus was a son, and by being a son, there are privileges, there are entitlements to being a son. There are things that were expected of him. There are things that he expected to enjoy. Things like honor, things like joy, peace, uh, plenty, overflow. You know, there are so many things that they, they come with the position of being a son. A son of the creator of the universe. The one who owns gold and silver. The one who owns cattle on a thousand hills. The one who owns the earth and its fullness. Imagine you are a son. I mean, he was in a privileged position. And everybody had an expectation of him. It's just like you being a son of the first family. By being a son of the first family. There are so many entitlements, security, cars, land, whatever you want, whatever you wish should just come so easily. And so that was Jesus Christ. He was a son. He came with that position, with that title, with those privileges. And the Bible says that though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the thing that he suffered. I'm telling you, Jesus went through real things. He went through real life. He went hungry. He was beaten. He, they argued. They, they, they spat on him. They beat him. They put him on the cross. They hanged him. They speared him. He died like a robber. He died like a thief. He died the worst life. And all this was happening not because he was no longer a son. Not because he had lost his position and privileges. 
the Lord took him through the obedience lessons. He wanted him to be obedient. He wanted him to be what he wanted him to be. I wanted to liken this to a soldier. When soldiers are going through training, I have a friend who went through training and he told me there is a time they have to go three weeks without sleeping. You know, you don't have to close your eyes. If you close them, they cane you. They pour water on you. You have to be awake three weeks without sleeping. And they are doing this not because they are punishing you. Not because they don't love you. They want you to be the seasoned soldier. And that's why almost every soldier that I know, their eyes, they, they have a certain look. You look at him once and you know this man has undergone a certain training. And so Jesus had to suffer certain things in order to learn obedience. And I'm here to encourage us. Maybe you're listening to me and you're undergoing terrible things. You are undergoing certain circumstances and you're wondering, am I still born again? Am I still a child of God? Is Christ still on the throne? Does he really care? Does he really love me? The answer is, he's still on the throne. He still loves you. He still has better plans for you, better than all these others. He has good wishes for you. He has a budget for you. But whatever you're undergoing is that you may learn obedience. And this obedience is not only just for you, but even for others to learn from. When you look at the Bible critically, you look at the likes of Joseph. They underwent terrible experiences. And you wonder, why would such a faithful young man like Joseph go through all that? Including being in prison? Where was God? God was teaching him obedience. No wonder he became one of the best prime ministers. When he showed up after being prepared, when he showed up in the eyes of Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, where can we find such a young man as this? In whom is the spirit of God? He had all manner of skill and understanding. The same thing happened to Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego when they were thrown into the fire. You would wonder, where was God? And maybe you're there asking, why? Why am I going through this? I want to tell you, God is up to something bigger. After you have learned obedience, it will be time for promotion. When you go to the next verse, the Bible is clear. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And being made perfect, there is something the Lord wants to perfect in the inside of your life. And so he brings this, he brings that, he brings that. Look at this corona situation we've been in. I've had several testimonies from my pastor friends, from my congregants. They've attained so much more than they would have attained in the normal times. Why? We have learned to trust God. We have had quality time with Him. We have had time to pray. And I encourage you to do exactly that. When things are coming from all directions, don't complain. Just go on your knees and begin to chat with the Father. Begin to reason with Him. Begin to make your request clear and known to Him. And as you do that, He's going to come. And when He comes, He will perfect you. And when you have been perfected, you will begin to author things. Jesus became the author of eternal salvation. No wonder the Bible says that there is no other name. This name, Jesus, has been elevated. I know some religious people are very uncomfortable with the name Jesus. But whether you are uncomfortable or not, I want you to know that Jesus underwent so many sufferings, underwent so many experiences. He paid a price that no other would pay. And it's on the basis of that that the Bible declares that the name Jesus has been elevated that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. He is the author of eternal salvation. There is no shortcut to this. There is no other name. You may have a better plan, a better religion, a better belief system, which appears more organized, more orderly. But I am telling you one thing. There is only one name the Bible testifies. The name Jesus. And all of us have one option to run into this name. And we are saved. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it. And they are saved. They are saved. They are delivered. Why? The name underwent several experiences. And I want to encourage you, child of God. Whoever is listening to me, wherever you are, I want to encourage you. The things 
have bombarded you. They are not to kill you. They are not to destroy you. They are not to shame you. They are there to season you. They are there to encourage you. They are there to awaken every gifting inside of you. They are there to propel you. They are there to act as stepping stones. They are there to act as springboards. They are there to push you into your destiny. And I want to tell you, you will get there. Not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. We have this name of Jesus. It is no wonder that it, when you go to Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible is very clear that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? You must have faith only in the name of Jesus. That's the name that has been gazetted. The name that has been set apart for our salvation, for our healing, for our promotion, for our betterment, for our life. Remember, the devil came to still kill and destroy, but Jesus came that we may have life and life in its fullness. Life is only found in Christ Jesus. And as I come to the conclusion, I want you to be strengthened. I want you to be awakened. I want you to wake up and believe God no matter what is coming your way. Don't lose heart. Let your faith in the Lord be strengthened. Things will be better again. Are you a pastor? Things are going to be better. Are you a single man and you have lost hopes? Maybe they chucked you in this COVID and because you lost a job, you lost a salary, you lost things and you are there desperately, you're wondering, what can I do? When is this COVID coming to an end? Let me tell you, when COVID has come to an end and you have been perfected, someone more beautiful will come. Someone with a salary will come. Someone ready for marriage will come and we shall celebrate your marriage very soon. In the name of Jesus, that ministry will stand. You will be able to get land. Maybe the land will chest you because you can't pay in this season. Nothing is going on. It's like, oh, I want to do agriculture in my plot of land. Let him do it. But let me tell you, very soon, the Lord will give you land. Why? Because the name Jesus that I'm talking about, it makes the impossible possible. And as a child of God, as somebody who has a belief in him, just trust. And this God that I'm talking about, He's not a God of trial and fail, you know. He's a God who is sure. He's a God who is able. He has all the ability. He has all the resources. He has everything that we need. And that's why we must come to him with confidence, with boldness, with an assurance that he is going to reward us. The Bible is clear. He has never told us to seek him in vain. You cannot serve God and go away empty. You cannot serve God and you go away languishing. There are people who were with him, you know, for three days listening to him. And when he was about to dismiss them, he made a statement. I said, these people have been with me for three days, not eating, not even moving anywhere. If I dare leave them to go hungry, they may die on the way. They will starve on the way. We have such a father who cares. He does not want you to starve. And he will not allow any circumstance, any situation to take you to starvation. Even when he allows pain, like he allowed in the life of Job, he told the devil, you can punish him, but do not take his life. Let me tell you, that thing is not going to take your life. Just keep trusting. Just keep believing. And you will get out of it better life. You'll get out of that den alive. You'll get out of that fish better alive. You'll get out of that situation better alive and with a testimony. And remember, the men are great by their story. So God is just building your story. Amen. Maybe you think it's too much. Yes, it's too much because the people for you to encourage and to minister to require such a story. And tomorrow when you wake up and you begin to tell people of the God and the God you believe and why he has taken you through, people will marvel, people will believe, people will cry and many will turn back to the Lord. And that's the ultimate goal that God has purposed for you. Amen. Shall you be encouraged with that? And I pray that through the week you'll continue pondering on the book of Hebrews and your faith in God will be strengthened. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've spoken your word. Maybe there is somebody who has been going through something terrible, something hard, something harsh, something painful. And it's been wondering, Lord, I've been faithful. Lord, I've tithed. Lord, I've prayed. Lord, I've kept myself holy and pure. Why am I going through this? The Bible has made it clear that Jesus, because you, though you were a son, you went through terrible things. Just learn obedience. It's my prayer that we shall endure the lessons God has set for us. It's my prayer that you, you will release a grace for each one of us to 
go through whatever we're going through. And that, Lord, we shall not get out of them failure. We shall not die in these situations. But we shall go through them as victors. We shall go through them with a testimony, with a new sermon, with a new song, with something to encourage the body of Christ. King of glory, I've done my part. And I know you're a specialist of following your word to make sure it comes to pass. Shall you follow it to the very end? Wherever this voice reaches, follow it up and let it encourage, let it nourish, let it build and restore the kingdom of God. God bless you so much. and Have a fruitful week. See you next Sunday. Amen. Yeah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching. I believe that you've been blessed by the word and the praise and worship team. Please continue every Sunday. Don't forget to follow us uh, on, uh, on YouTube and then on, on Facebook, Set Free Life Church. Uh, subscribe and then continue to watch us every other day. We believe that your life is not going to remain the same. Thank you so much. And we believe that everything is all right through the situation you're going through you're going to come out as a victor you're going to come out and i believe that god is going to do something new in your life i will pray that you have a blessed week and may the lord bless you amen amen